of encouragement and that's a testimony as to what the ADF was able to do. Uh, with great humility and humbleness, I wish to state that the Honorable Minister Paula has arrived. And if I can now please ask the Honorable Minister and our country manager, Mr. Yasa, to come up here, please. Please, please. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for gracing us at this closing session. So, to kickstart this part, can we please play the video clip? It's a summary of what happened during the three days that we were here. I love the music, you know. So we at ADF, we came to motivate, we came to show, we came to, to discover and to conquer. And I think by this video clip, I think we managed to do that. Without much further ado, if I might please call upon our country manager, Mr. Yasa, to say, to give us a few words. Thank you very much. And uh, Honorable Minister of ICT of Rwanda, Madam Paula Ngabir, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all pr protocol observed. I'm not going to give you a speech, but uh, I think what I want to do is, on behalf of all my colleagues in the World Bank, uh, I want to give a few reflections on the entirety of what we have been seeing in the last few days. Unfortunately, every good and exciting things, uh, thing come to an end. So we're approaching the end of this. So I want to do a little bit of reflections on what we, uh, we had in the last few days. Uh, you know, mention a little bit of takeaways, but more importantly, uh, talk about uh, what's next. Where do we go from here? I think the first thing I learned uh, in the opening session is that I am a BBT. Uh, I did not really hear that uh, term before, born before technology. Right? So, but I promise you all, I am being treated from being a BBT. Uh, so that's uh, one of the most exciting things. I, I attend many conferences in this uh, venue is the average age of participants. That was really very, very exciting to see so many young people around. So that was really something that was inspiring. A uh, few things, one that really struck us was how different stakeholders came together. 
from the regulators, from the private sector, from governments, from uh, development partners, and all focused around one thing. I mean, we want to see how can we harness this new technology and solve problems that people are facing in the continent. And I think this is really very inspiring. It you know, didn't matter where people came from. It didn't matter their gender. I mean, I don't know what's the problem with being a man or being a woman. People were focused on one thing. How can we really harness this technology and make sure that we are using it for the good of our society? So that's really very exciting to see. Uh, another thing that really, you know, uh, made us think a lot is that we believe that there has been a community that was born out of this event, right? So we all sitting here together, regardless of what affiliation we have or which country we come from, I think we constitute a community. A community that we really want to encourage that will continue to interact with each other. So we've had a lot of opportunities in the last three days to network amongst ourselves. We will have a little bit of more time this evening. But most importantly, I think we would very much like to encourage everyone to continue that interaction. And you know, the world has become very easy to maneuver. Communication had made, has made it very easy for us to communicate. So this is really a plea from our side that we want this movement, this community, whatever you want to call it, to continue to thrive and continue to be in touch with each other. Now, few takeaways, and I think the first and most important thing that, uh, that I have seen and uh, that I take away is that what His, what His Excellency President Kagame said in his opening remarks is that we can turn the many challenges that are facing us into opportunities using new technology and in particular drone technology. That's, you know, a very inspiring, you know, piece of statement. A second thing that he also said that I think is extremely important is that not only should we focus on what kind of problems are we able to solve using this technology, but there is also an opportunity to start a new industry in the continent. New industry around manufacturing, not just using drones, about developing the skills of having as many technicians, pilots, and, and so on. So we're talking about creating jobs, we're talking about contributing to the economic and social development of all societies in, in the continent. So extremely, you know, broad and, and strong vision. And I think what I have seen over the last few days confirms to me that Africa is indeed at the frontier of what we are calling the fourth industrial revolution, and Africa is in the heart of developing the, and be, being part of making that new revolution. I want to really encourage every one of you, regardless of what your affiliation is, to continue on what you are doing. You have a very important role, whether we are sitting in a regulator's uh, office, or you are in the private sector, or like myself, in a development institution, you have a very important role. We are all here learning together. There isn't a blueprint that we are all reading from, and the fact that we can get together frequently will make us together put that uh, blueprint uh, and learn from the experiences that are happening. Now, where do we go from here, I think is a very important question, and I think the Honorable Minister will probably talk a little bit about that because she always has, uh, you know, very, very big dreams for going forward. But what I really would like to encourage you is, number one, to be the ambassador of the Africa Drone Forum 2020. 
there are so many events that take place in the aviation industry, in the transport industry, and part of what we can all do is take the findings, the messages, the experiences, the lessons that we have learned in this forum and, you know, transform it and that knowledge into other platforms and other venues that you all participate in. Whether it's, I mean, a national event that you are attending, a regional event or a global event organized by governments, uh, development partner or whatever this is. So that's extremely important that you continue to contribute and be part of, of that community. The other thing is that we want you to encourage us and to encourage each other that we convene again in the future. At this point, you know, there is a lot of thinking about what kind of getting together can we have in the future so that we can get, take a stock of what progress has been happening. So a next uh, ADF forum, what, what the shape of that will be using a different forum. So th these are all ideas that many of the stakeholders are going to be thinking very hard about when we hear about the, uh, you know, your views about the event. We've heard some of that now, but there will be uh, a formal way of getting some feedback from you, including what do you think the next steps for uh, this movement, newborn movement, can be. I just want to also uh, address in particular the African youth scholars whom I had the pleasure and honor to meet yesterday. So it, it was so inspiring to see young people who are so passionately engaged in activities trying to resolve real life problems in their societies and trying to mobilize the modern technology to do so. so Please keep up this very good work. We, from our side in the World Bank, will continu continue to do whatever we uh, can to support yourselves, to support others like you who are trying to, you know, take charge of the progress of, of the, this beloved continent that we all have. Like everybody else, I was very, very excited about the challenge. I am always very, I'm very uh, much looking forward to what happens in the coming days. But uh, to be honest, in my view, the fact, if you are here and participating in this competition, you are a winner. You are a winner because you have gone through lots of competition already to come here, and you are a winner because you've put so much effort into being part of it. So while, of course, everyone is enthusiastic about winning, but I think, you know, everyone who is participating in this challenge is, in my view, a winner. Now, finally, uh, so that you hopefully will have some time to see this beautiful city that you are in. I know you have been in, in closed rooms for, for a long time. I really, I mean, cannot stop before very sincerely thanking uh, some of our stakeholders, the first of which, and most importantly, the government of Rwanda. So some of you may or may not know, but uh, the agreement to hold this forum here in Kigali was not really very long ago. And uh, the pickup from the government was just instantaneous and immediate. And the level of coordination and collaboration we have seen from the government, and I don't want to start naming the different parts in the government because there are many stakeholders in the government of Rwanda who took part in uh, putting this forum together, but I really sincerely thank the government for a job that is very, very well done. I also would like sincerely to thank our development partners who financially contributed to supporting this event, but not just financially, but also with providing a lot of technical assistance, a lot of preparation uh, to this forum. So thank you very much, and I see that we have David sitting uh, with us, which is one of the big supporters of, of this forum. And last but not least, I really would like to sincerely thank my colleagues in the World Bank. Uh, there is 
been a lot of work that went into this. I honestly did not imagine the scale of the logistics until I went to Kiboi on uh, Tuesday and saw all these equipments. So it takes a lot of time, effort, coordination to make sure that all these equipments are, which are coming from different parts of the world land in the right time, be in uh, in place ready for us to see all the uh, what we saw and to continue what will happen in the next week. So I really would like, please, whoever took part in the organization to please stand up so that we can really give you a good uh, hand. Thank you very much. And having been in Rwanda for four years, I always have to speak about how beautiful the country is. If you have the time, we are coming into the weekend. Take advantage of being here. It's a wonderful city, a wonderful country, not very big. So in two hours, you can really be in very interesting places. So please, for those of you who came from outside the country, take the chance and explore. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for those words and words of reflection with a little bit of motivation. Now, what next? Honorable Minister, we kindly are eager to wait to hear what you will say. It's your choice. Oh, well. <laughs> Good evening. I was telling him I was born after technology, so if I'm going to read a speech, I might as well stand. Yeah. Esteemed guests, uh, business leaders, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, what an exciting three days we've had. And I do hope that this forum has been um, enlightening for every one of you that managed to attend whether it was just a few sessions or many of the sessions that we had. And having had uh, this forum as the first of the kind on the continent, we know uh, that this has been a true success. And I want to thank everyone that has been behind making it a success and making sure that we have great conversations that have got us thinking about what next. We've had a very comprehensive picture of existing uh, drone solutions the challenges in the industry that need to be addressed and where we think drones can play an important role uh, in responding to those challenges, but also a view of what the future prospects of the drone ecosystem look like for the African continent. Guided by the theme to unlock lower skies for mobility and digital services in African markets, we realized that harmonization of policies and regulations for cross-border um, UAS flights is key to unlocking our lower skies to shape more innovation and provide us with new services. We had informative discussions, whether it's among the different civil aviation authority leaders, the different representatives, both from the industry, as well as the, um, as, 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 um, the youthful community that we had here. People were very keen to understand what the industry has for them, and in regards to both the regulations and policy innovations that are really needed to steer Africa in a new direction. The forum also covered the future of deliveries using drones, whereby whether it's food airdrops, deliveries by drones, can be a game changer in particular for the last mile delivery in conflict areas. It's remarkable to see that very particularly Africa's agriculture sector is progressively transformed into a high-tech industry through precision farming methods. Through real-time gathering and processing of data, farmers are able to make data-driven decisions. As witnessed here, new and socially impactful opportunities for using drones continue to emerge across the globe. And it's impressive to note that Africa is already beginning to lead the drone revolution in logistics, natural resource monitoring, and humanitarian response in, for the benefit of the citizens. Unmanned aerial um, vehicles have demonstrated the potential to drastically improve health supply chain system from product forecasting 
to stock and order management, logistics, data management, and transport resource management. We cannot exhaust all that has discuss been discussed in this forum, but the challenge for all of us here and for the rest of Africa is that we have to achieve and fully benefit from the use of drones and unmanned um, aerial vehicles for social economic development. And for that to happen, we need to create and maintain a comprehensive platform for knowledge exchange, networking, and partnership across Africa and the world, looking at the different market needs and opportunities that exist. And I believe the Africa Drone Forum has been one example that gives us that kind of platform that allows us to exchange experiences, but more so to make the connections that are going to take us uh, to the next level. As a general call to action is that for all our countries gathered here and even beyond, that we continue to work together through the different designated authorities to unlock the lower skies as a source for mobility. This will require performance-based regulatory regimes, like, such as the one that we have here in Rwanda, that will allow for room for further innovation. And lastly, there's need for development of performance-based technical standards, especially for beyond visual sight of, uh, line of sight operations, since these are most suitable for the most important use cases, those that we discussed, but also the potential use cases that we, uh, we continue to see. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take this opportunity to thank the World Bank, uh, Civil Aviation Authority leaders, very particularly RCA and RAC, drone operators, visitors, delegates, and all who made this forum a success. Join me in thanking them for making this truly a success. And before we end, I think this is a message very specifically for the competitors that are in the Lake Chivu uh, challenge. We wish you the very best, and as Yasa said, everyone that made it to this competition is already a winner. And for us, what is the need for us is to make sure that all the different use cases that are being tested in this competition can be scaled, not just in Rwanda, but for the rest of the continent. So as the competition continues for the rest of the week, I hope we can all pay very particular attention in understanding which ones of these are going to create value and impact for us, and how do we work together as stakeholders to scale them and create sustainable business, business models. To companies interested in starting operations in Rwanda, it only takes six hours to set up a business in Rwanda. So before you leave, and you can do it online, so you don't have to wait, you don't have to feel the pressure that end of day is already here or close of business is already here. So you're very welcome to join us in this journey that we've started of becoming a knowledge-based economy, but also truly becoming uh, a technology hub. And we do uh, look forward to supporting you in both your engagement, your start starting the business here, but also scaling beyond Rwanda. I thank you for your time, and I wish you the very best for those that will be traveling back home. And like Yasa said, I hope you get time to enjoy the rest of Kigali. Thank you very much. Honourable, yeah, just uh, uh, yes, you can come down. Yes, Honourable Minister, thank you very, very much for your kind words. And what next? I think what you said was also echoed by the participants here. And the two major points that we take away from this: one, unlocking the skies that we need to work together across countries in order to have better services to our citizens in the region, and two. As everybody leaves here, this is a request, talk about the ADF wherever you go and what an impact it made and what the possibilities are. With that, Honourable Minister, I thank you so much. Mr. Yasa, I thank you so much for gracing us at this closing session.